Hello everyone and welcome back to the number one podcast for garment decorators. Andy and I are thrilled to be joined again by Dave this week from Transfer Express. Thanks for joining us, Dave. How are you? I'm doing fantastic today. It's always a pleasure to be hanging out with you both. Uh, and anytime I get to talk about the apparel decorating industry and let's say nerd out, it's going to be a good time regardless. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely, that's what our podcast is for, 100%. We were saying we did our last podcast live last week because it was our one-year podcast anniversary. Um, but we were talking about how it's such a great place for everybody that is a garment decorator or a heat printer to just talk about it endlessly or listen to it endlessly, whereas their you know, families and partners at home must get really bored of listening to it day in, day out. Oh, yeah. It's been, what, 13 years now? And uh, I would say that I kind of converted my wife a little bit. She she understands enough to, like, when she's walking through the stores that she'll start tugging on prints and, like, looking at it up close to be like, oh, yeah, this is screen printed. <laughs> so. That's impressive. I feel like that's the first sign, isn't it? Like, Andy said that to me when I first joined. He was like, you're never going to shop in the same way again. And the first time I did it, I was like, oh, I get what you mean now. Mm -hmm. Yep. It only, it only took her really 10 years to start really tugging on it so it's been the past three years she's been looking at everything with the with the decorator's eye let's say <laughs> better late than never sorry must, go be, on. must be the magic of styles though it's in, isn't it dave <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that was it <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you guys at transfer express have been up to recently i know you've had a lot of events on am i right you had styles pro day as well which i saw that looked incredible Mm -hmm. Yep. We've been doing just tons of education. Uh, I think the team is actually on the way to another show now in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but it's been a crazy, wild, busy uh, start of 2023 so far. We started with Long Beach out in uh, California, which was great. Uh, and that was really awesome to see really the entire community kind of get back together here in the States. Uh, throughout the pandemic, it, the shows were, you know, lighter than they usually have been in terms of vendors so that means some some older or maybe new friends aren't coming uh, and then of course with not as many vendors you're not having as many attendees so this year in both the impressions expo in long beach and the impressions expo in atlantic city the turnout was absolutely incredible uh, hearing from event organizers that were back to exceeding the pre-pandemic levels for attendees uh, is just fantastic so seeing those decorators come back out. But a lot of it is, I want to say, decorators that started during the pandemic that are now really looking to take it to the next level. Uh, so being in the position to really help them grow their business from coming from a hobby or a side hustle and then like growing it up. So I think education has been absolutely paramount at a lot of these conferences and events that's been going on um, from the Graphics Pro Expo, like I mentioned this this week, whenever we as we're recording this. Um, but yeah, we've been been on the road, have some more things coming up to go. And uh, yeah, we, we look towards the end of the year is going to just be it's going to I mean, it's going to get here before we know it. But the pro day as part of that education is absolutely just I mean, it's awesome to be a part of it and be able to be an educator and share my experiences, because that's a lot what I, what I tell people with any industry and especially the printing industry. So if you get into garment decorating, there's really no substitute for experience. You're going to learn the hard way um, and you're going to lose a lot of money doing it. And that's why these sessions, these education sessions, especially like Stalls Pro Day, are going to have people who have been in the industry, who have been in similar shoes to you uh, to help you avoid those costly mistakes. So you're talking about being able to print more efficiently, or you're talking about uh, increasing your profits with not having you know, to, to research and development yourself, listening to people who have been able to do it, and then taking those same concepts, applying them to your business from you know strategies about diversifying your products all the way down to just correct placement on a shirt, you know, where that's going to help you print more efficiently, your customers are going to be wowed, and all of that entire cycle. So that's what I really love about Pro Day and being a part of Pro Day, because it's uh, Josh, Jenna, um, and Kelly, all from stalls, uh, and myself included. And we talk about, it's not just about the product, it's not about heat printing, it's really about apparel decorators businesses, and helping them achieve their own goals. So like that is, that's something that I think is like, it's really powerful for decorators and interacting with decorators afterwards. Uh, it seems to be like exactly what they were looking for and, and right where they are in their business and trying to get over that plateau 
uh, that we're able to help them out. And that just feels, I mean, absolutely incredible to be a part of. Is there anything in particular? I mean, obviously, the, the pro days, there's a lot of stuff that you cover. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything you could perhaps share that's a kind of light bulb moment that a lot of people have when they come to these pro days. I know that we were quite relatively recently at a show, and there's a few things that we were talking about. And when we asked them, do you know how long it takes to actually fuse a t shirt? And the amount of people that would be like, do you know what? Actually, I don't. Mm -hmm. And things like that. So I was wondering if there's anything in the uh, the pro day that you kick off with, or that you sh or you kind of share that you like. You know that this is going to be something that people perhaps either take for granted or d just don't really um, think about, but is really actually one of the most important things that they do as a heat printer. Yeah, absolutely. I I actually think. I mean. There's four I could think of right off the top of my head, uh, which is okay. I know a lot more than just one. Uh, but <laughs> uh, because I mean, and it kind of it kind of reverts back to those like those business minded goals. So the first one that I think of is is really um, it's it's staying relevant. It's staying on trend. I think anybody anywhere, if you are selling apparel online, you absolutely need to be staying current with the trends. Because if you are not, your competition is. And your customers are looking for, say, those blank styles or that style of print. Uh, and if your competitors have it, your customers are going to buy it from them and not you. So it is really, really important. You see that light bulb moment go off when uh, it's, you know, we're, we're showing these different styles and passing around these samples. And it's like, I've seen people wearing these. I've seen these on the store shelves. And people have that light bulb moment that it's not like, you don't have to be, you know, a trendsetter. You don't have to follow all these influencers on Instagram. You just need to keep your eyes open when you go to the store, when you're walking around, when you're going to, uh, you know, doing anything, you're going to a concert or something. Look what other people are wearing and you'll see these trends emerge. And it's all this stuff that that when we're showing it in a classroom setting, they're like, yeah, like this is the stuff my wife wears or this is the stuff my kids are wearing. And it's like then they have that light bulb moment where it is. This is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, coming, following up on that, I think really diversifying the products that you offer, uh, seeing how, I mean, you guys know direct to film is changing the game here for apparel decorators and being able to apply it on everything from t-shirts to polos, hoodies. And then you're even looking at backpacks and bags and accessories and all of these different materials where people are like, that's a value add that I could add to my customers. Boom. That light bulb goes off. You know, it's using the same stuff. It's using the exact same heat press I'm already using, the exact same transfers I'm already using. Why am I not trying to upsell a customer on selling some headwear or uh, doing some personalization on the strap of a backpack or something like that? Where it's super, I mean, easy, but it's all value adds to add more profit uh, onto their business. Then when we're talking about profit, I mean, that's when you start to really look into, because we do cover a, a quite a section on actually uh, looking into the profit calculations and efficiency of how long it takes. So one of the most fun things uh, that we do uh, during the most recent one we just did in New Jersey um, was uh, Josh Ellsworth and myself raced each other, essentially, with a real world job. We put together the need for a, a bicycle shop uh, that needed some T-shirts, needed some headwear. Um, and we took 20 minutes and tried to do as much as we could. We both ended up completing, I think I got just under 30 shirts in 20 minutes. And that was like talking to people and interacting. And I mean, so I was, I was still hustling and I know I could have doubled that capacity if there were no distractions, or maybe I just had the, the target transfers podcast on instead of talking <laughs> to other people. Right. Uh, but being able to see the profit potential and the calculations that you could do then. Because then using, I mean, we didn't make up numbers. We we called out uh, people in the audience and asked them, what do you think you could sell this hat for? And then right there, we set our sale price and we worked the numbers backwards to figure out if it was profitable. Uh, spoiler alert, if you're going to attend a pro day, it's profitable. <laughs> but uh, essentially there are, uh, you know, there's those calculations that you just need to be thinking about as you go through these orders and it's okay to say no. Uh, and that's, I think, a light bulb moment for some people when it's a job that doesn't make sense for their business or it's stressing them out or, um, you know, it's, it's pushing their more profitable work to the side. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it, it takes some experience to be able to identify those and it does, I'm going to say, take some guts too. Cause that was one of the biggest things that I know in my young professional career, I had a really hard problem saying no. 
And so like being able to say no, it was so uh, freeing and validating that like, no, because I'm going to waste my time or money on this project. So seeing that, that kind of click with people. And as we talk about these businesses looking to get over this hump or like reach the top of this plateau so that they could take their side hustle and maybe they just quit their full-time job or like they're looking to add an employee, they're looking to standardize stuff. All of these efficiency calculations and impressions per hour, or how many shirts, you know, uh, how long does it actually take you to print a shirt like or hat or whatever your business is, is going for, like trying to figure that out managing your profits and being able to really take your business to the next level with all of those tips that we share for even increasing efficiency. So, I mean, like it is, it is packed and loaded full of uh, these light bulb moments, like, like you mentioned, that just really help people, I think, take their business to the next level. Excellent. I think that the, the point you're making there about relevancy, I think is a really important one because I think there's a there's a definite mindset to that is like you say people sometimes like oh yeah that's not for me that's all that's what the youngins were but like you say this isn't re relevant can just be a marginal step just mm -hmm. a slight color to this exact same products that you're already offering anyway it's just a different shade of color or a slightly different color or something like that and it's just enough of a tweak that it makes it more interesting to your customers that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And keeping your audience in mind, too, is is a big aspect of it. Because if, if say, your target demographic, say you're, uh, yeah, like a, a bicycle shop or something, and your target demographic is more serious riders, so you're looking, uh, you know, 24 to to maybe 44 or fi even 55, right? Um, <clears throat> so you have this a little bit uh, older skewing demographic, don't go for those like super Gen Z trends, you know, you're going to go for something that makes sense for your audience. So when you're out and about just, just keeping your eyes open for for, you know, your target audience or <clears throat> your niche, like if you if you're doing bicycle clothing, and or by you know, you're you're servicing a bicycle shop, or you're selling clothing geared towards that niche, go to the events and that's it. Like one afternoon and you're going to have be full of ideas, even just talking to people. But if you're already ingrained in it, you know what you like to wear, you know what's comfortable. So like you don't you never have to look far. Um, and, and just if you're out in the world, just stay, you know, keep your mind tuned into it. Otherwise, it just becomes, you know, the billboards that just fly by um, that maybe are a message that's that's right for you, but you're just not paying attention. So just being able to pay attention uh, and then, yeah. Just, just hone into your audience and the information's there. Are there any particular trends off the top of your head that you've seen recently or you've seen at the shows you've been attending that people have been like, yes, I need to include that in my business? Any, I don't know whether it's like a color or a garment style or maybe a font in a transfer or anything like that that people might consider moving forwards? There are, there are a lot. Um, and there it's kind of, it, I think we're right in this like nice, uh, area right now of kind of the, the changing of the trends where like we see this start to evolve going into summer and like, then even the fall styles I'm sure will, will change even more. Uh, but, but the one thing that we saw that was really, really, uh, kind of prevalent, uh, comfort colors and like the oversized candy pastel teas uh not they're not not as pastel colors as they were maybe last year but moving a little bit more bolder and vibrant and you see those in the port and company line and the comfort colors line with their new colors like the banana one or whatever is like a, a nice vibrant yellow but that style of like an oversized t-shirt very very popular uh the one design trend which i'm kind of like <clears throat> secretly loving is this like uh I call it like a retro Western, but it involves like, a, it's usually like a limited color print, like one or two kind of earth tones really fits in well with like the large, uh, the oversized kind of styled tees. And then it kind of evokes some like nineties feel like the, the old Nirvana tees or like the grunge tees, or it'll even like spin the other way and be like kind of more contemporary, but like country western vibes like cowboy hats cactuses uh you know like longhorn skeletons but it's just that aesthetic uh that really kind of is popular right now through the spring uh anything with checkerboard so it makes it feel very 90s like the birth of ska like <laughs> but a lot of like the band t inspired stuff you see um and then even i would say like tie-dye necessarily not hanging around like it did last year, two years ago, but the crystal dye. So like the two tone or like off dye where it's like, 
slightly bleached and a lighter color, but it's more of like a tone on tone dye that those are uh, retaining their popularity as well. Of course, in the other market segments, the, uh, you know, if you're dealing with any athletics, not too big of a change there. It seems like everybody's shifting to like these full color logos and gradients and stuff too, which makes it great for direct to film. Uh, and then of course, performance wear is uh, very similar styles to what we've seen, but a lot of uh, like crop tops even working their way out of performance wear and going more into the mainstream, just as like the, the high-waisted jeans have become much more prevalent. So the crop tops, you can't think of them like the, the you know, the 1999, 2000s, like Britney Spears crop tops. Um, they're much more like they don't show any midriff. They're just cut higher uh, to match the higher waistline that you see people wearing these days. I think the um, yeah the band tee thing you were talking about we've a hundred percent seen over here. It might just be my search history on whatever I'm shopping for, but I've a hundred percent seen that the checker thing. I absolutely love. I've mm -hmm. been I'm just obsessed with it. The, the, I there's been this trend going around on. I don't know if you've seen it, but they're doing like you said the bold colors, but it's like been pink and orange. And at first I was like, I'm really not sure if I'm about this. It clashes too much. And now I'm like, no, print me one. I want I want to wear one. Um, <laughs> But the, the tie-dye thing is interesting because we we did a bit of work on tie-dye last year. We fused on some tees. We d made some content. We we tried it out. But I don't think – it definitely picked up more in the U.S. than it did over here. And I, I don't think it really caught on. I think there were maybe th – there was a bit of it, but it wasn't as big as it was in the U.S. And I think you're right. There's definitely newer, more – subtle trends this year i suppose i haven't seen it pick up as much i mean you may have seen differently andy but i definitely well it depends do you shop for tie-dye <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean yeah, i can't say it's a staple in my wardrobe but... oh that's disappointing okay but no i think in terms of like what we see day yeah. to day in terms of what like customers are fusing on and you know you scroll on the socials and you get a feel for like what's going on don't you mm -hmm. i definitely haven't seen as much tie-dye this year did you guys get the wave of like the bleaching where like uh, I saw it a lot on TikTok where it's like people laying out shirts in the sun and spraying bleach on them to get that they, like, like flick it. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. I saw a few of those. Yeah. Because, yeah, that got really, really popular. And I feel like it's it's waning now. But that was huge on like the marketplace sites like Etsy and uh, and like the craft fairs saw those a lot, even to the point where like some of the I always go by. If the if your supplier, if you're buying from Bella Canvas or you're buying from uh, you know any of these wholesale brands, Next Level, Gildan, Jerseys, if they are starting to adapt this style or like that that kind of uh, colorway of a tee, the amount of research and development that they put into that to be able to make the blanks and manufacture the blanks and stock them says something that it's like this is a trend that they're taking notice of and capitalizing on it and they don't handle those investments you know loosely they do a lot of research so when you notice one of your suppliers uh for blank apparel doing something like that then it's like oh this is a trend coming and you got to connect those dots and like for custom decorators it is it is a little bit different ball game because then your customers are coming to you but being able to suggest like hey i see what you're trying to do here you have this nice like you know uh more retro 90s kind of vintage aesthetic going on this would really pair well with this good tee it makes you look like a, a t-shirt printing pro you know uh, so that helps if you're a custom decorator but if you are a uh a, a you know a brand that is where it is just incredibly important because anybody who's in your niche or ser serving your audience they're going to capitalize on those trends and you it, you got to act on them quick because if you don't they're gone just like tie-dye <laughs> Last, comes back for about six months eight months a year and then now nah, then it's gone and it, it will probably be 15 more years before i can pull those shirts out of the closet again <laughs> instead of people being like look at that guy <laughs> at that point i do be like thank god i never bought a tie-dye yeah. t-shirt <laughs> yeah. you could be a trendsetter um, yourself just wear tie-dye all the time make it a trend right yeah maybe maybe <laughs> next year i'll start wearing it i think that's a good idea we'll send one you we'll send you one <laughs> One thing I did want to um, touch on with you, Dave, that we spoke about last time was the sample boxes that you showed us that you've made for customers to take to customers. Um, and we were talking the other day about how it's really cool. You've been fusing DTF onto the boxes as well to like make it a whole package. Um, oh, yeah. 
And I just thought that was an absolute genius idea for, you know, fusing one of each garment in full color, presenting it nicely and taking that to your meeting or, you know, to your prospective client and just being like, this is what I can offer you. But because it's so neatly packaged, they're more likely to, I don't know, see you as a professional or secure the job or I just, yeah, if you could talk us through how you came about that idea, really, because I think that's genius for people to take note of. So a lot of that's inspired by what we've seen from the from the industry. Uh, so that was just kind of something that we saw a, a couple decorators doing, and we took it to the next level. Uh, of course, like if As you're, always. yeah, <laughs> if you're just a regular decorator, say um, headwear has kind of been exploding, and decorated headwear just being able to easily add it on if you're already decorating apparel. So that's kind of where it started. A you know prospective client, you drop off a T-shirt and a hat and a box uh, to say, hey you know, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. This is this is kind of like a preview of my capabilities. This was not possible years ago, just because of how cost prohibitive, especially if their logo had like four or five colors in it, you don't want to hand them something that's going to be inferior quality to what you're going to be doing in that production run. So now with direct to film, being able to offer and, and you know, being essentially a profit packed, super low cost item, especially for low pieces, you know, um, you don't need to be printing a lot. You don't have to worry about your color counts and you have a premium feel of a product that applies to, I mean, almost anything, right? So being able to give them that sample and it's something that they just wear, you know, maybe they're not even considering it. They're like, yeah, hey, whatever. Like, Hey, I'll wear the hat around. It's a freebie, whatever. Like, well, we're going to buy the t-shirts. But then being able to have that have that hat and somebody goes, hey, man, you got another one of those? And they're like, no, nah. it was a freebie that the guy gave me. Two, three, four people start asking about it at the company. They're going to place an order there. And I mean, I would say typically and at least a lot of the experience that we hear the second they see it, they're like, yes, that's it. I always say, like in my history coming at you know, from a design background, you could design something up on a computer, but it's not until you mock it up on a T-shirt that it starts to feel real for your customer. So like, that's when they're like, wow, like that, I want that. Give me, here's my money. I don't care how much it costs. I want that. So being able to actually give that to them in real life now and have that capability with like, it's essentially the cost of the garment and then a, a little bit for the transfer, a couple cents, you know? Uh, so like being able to pack that profit in there, especially if you're just adding it on to another job, like knowing that like, Oh, I got this company logo. They got one order of t-shirts from me, but I think they could benefit from this, 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 and this. It makes you look like a t-shirt printing pro that you are, right? And being able to supply them with that box, they love it. And even the, the, the personalized touch of let me grab one of these extra transfers and apply it to the box. Because then when they see that box, oh, wow, that's incredible. Being able to give them that experience. It's like opening a present, you know, on Christmas morning where you're like, this is ab like it, it. You remember that. And those experiences are memorable. It makes your business stand out. That's much more memorable than somebody coming in with a catalog or like, hey, here's a QR code. Browse my website for the styles that we have available. No, a little bit of marketing investment. And you could close these humongous jobs. And it wows people to the point where. It doesn't matter if you're the cheapest option. It doesn't matter if you're the most expensive option. Well, maybe it might matter if you're the most expensive option. But if you're that middle of the road option, you have it. Boom, right there. You've converted them uh, with that experience that now it, they're not going to shop to somebody else. And you're giving them the quality that you're going to be able to provide them in a full run too. So they have that sample that otherwise in the printing industry, you would have never had before direct to film. So like being able to do that, put it into a kit, um, we just did an entire, uh, webinar on a kit on kidding just a couple weeks ago. And you sometimes could sell those kits. Then if it's a company onboarding now, with still so much remote work going on. You want to give that sense of pride. So there are markets for this, uh, new hires at businesses when they're onboarding, whether in person or not, uh, when you look at schools and, uh, orientation days, Oh, Hey, yeah, you're going to want to get outfitted. You're adding value by bundling all of this together where like it looks like a deal to the customer, but it's you moving extra pieces as a decorator. So that's putting more profit in your pocket too. being able to just push these kits out there. And yeah, it's a little bit of handwork to it, but priced accordingly, if it's 50 bucks or something for a hat, a t-shirt, a hoodie, that's a, that's a steal of a deal when you're looking at like buying a, a decorated hoodie retail price for, you know, 35, 40 bucks, like 
you're getting so much more in that. And as a decorator, then you're just moving more volume. It's filling the capacity of your shop and you're able to still profit on those the same as if you were selling them just individually. So uh, it really is a win-win for decorators and with the the profitability and the efficiency of using one product in like an ultra color max or even screen printed transfers will apply to cardboard absolutely fine like it's just an awesome awesome potential uh not only to get new sales but to to just load those profits in for any t-shirt business that's actually a genius idea i haven't thought of it and it's so simple now that you say it but rather than just using it as a sample box offer it as a product like i know we talk mm -hmm. about bundling and packaging things up but in that way that's that is such a good idea mm -hmm. yep we just yeah we just did more of them and i did uh it was for again a bike shop i don't know all of my examples now are for bike shops but essentially included a hat a notebook that was branded ultra color max just uh on a notebook that i bought off amazon for like two or three bucks for a two pack of them uh and then you put a, a little bit of branding on it and immediately now it's like your customers don't know that you have these capabilities unless you show them and showing them just takes a little bit of your time and maybe a couple bucks or something, uh, with, with, you know, having to produce it like, and the cost of the materials themselves. But then they, I had no idea you could customize notebooks, yeah, man, promo products, umbrellas, whatever you want. Uh, you could, it opens that conversation, but if you're not showing it, which is, you know, I recommend decorators to just show it on social media. Doesn't, you know, just take, take two minutes and make the TikTok. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. You're not making a Hollywood movie here. You know, um, you're just, you're just trying to put your services out there so somebody could see it and go, I needed branded notebooks for my company, or I needed those hats with the leather patch on them or whatever it may be. And they see it from you. Hey, what is it? What's it going to cost? Now you possibly have a new customer. So, so yeah, really, really important. It comes back around to relevancy again, I think, as well, because it's all about you teaching your customers how for them to stay relevant as well, not just yourself. If you're the middleman in this uh, in this situation, you've got to be like, look, here's a leather patch or here's Ultra Color Max on a box, and you teach them how to do it or what they're getting from it, you're educating them and making sure that they can feel that feeling that they could then, like say, pass on to the staff and make them feel special for working there and it improves retention or it leads to something else you never know. Absolutely. It's like what um, we had a customer uh, brand Essex on uh, quite a while ago now, actually. It feels like it was yesterday, but um, they were talking about how they just post on social media what they're printing that day. And some people or some customers will then reply and be like, oh, yeah, I forgot I needed one of those jackets or, oh, you do this now. That's cool. And it's almost just reminding them because the customers aren't not wanting to order, but sometimes it's just not at the top of their to-do list. So just by, you know, posting mm. two or three things a day, you might just trigger their memory or trigger their reminders and get more, you know, orders from that. Well, yep. I think that was that was what the, they said it and printing on C also said as well, that actually yeah. by posting the work that they were doing, not only were they getting more work for themselves, but the customer who they were posting about was finding they were getting more work as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Because they were like, oh, I need a plumber. I'm going to call that person now because I trust those people. So I must trust that person. Yeah. It builds an, it builds a good network. And that's really the beauty of social media is that like, and I know a lot of people just get so hung up on like TikTok, but I always say like, if you show off your passion towards your business to, to your craft, like if you are dedicated to apparel decorating or just dedicated to your, your audience, if it's, you know, you service a lot of the local community, highlighting them and showing that work takes two minutes. Doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Could just be nice, light, and easy. But grab the phone, snap a couple pictures of it. You're working on it anyway. It's on press, and it's a great way to get your services out there, to highlight your customers, uh, and yeah, a double-edged sword because then it could win you a lot of business too. Which it it's not taking. It shouldn't take time. It shouldn't take up a lot of your time, especially when you're busy. You gotta you gotta be marketing your business and and selling more custom apparel and producing it too. So don't don't let social media take up your entire life. Uh, and because a, a lot of people put a lot of eggs in that basket, and it's you know sometimes it does not pay off. But I always like I want to show I do a lot of TikToking uh, for the apparel decorating community and and Transfer Express. But I always think of it as like if I was you know I'm in my scroll. What do I want to see? What's a refresher if it's placement or like we put one out like heat press maintenance, like nobody's ever told me how to maintain a heat press. So I hit a Potronics and said, hey, how do I maintain a heat press? And, you know, Trevor gives me eight or nine steps of saying like, hey, this is everything you need to do. Use these specific products. I'm like, 
well, we need to tell people this. People need to know this, right? And so using the questions that I just have, being curious, I, I have the questions and I want to show people that. One big thing that comes up every single trade show I think I go or expo I go to is left chest prints. I'm wearing one right now, right? How do I make sure it's straight? How do I make sure it's in the right spot? Sounds like a great idea for a TikTok, huh? Like <laughs> we'll, we'll teach you how to do it in 60 seconds or less. Um, and I found like that, that kind of stuff really helps. So as any decorator, think about what your customers are thinking about and what their questions are. Answer the questions before they even have to ask them. Uh, and that's going to that's gonna attract you a very large and quick audience uh, when done right. Um, and this actually can kind of bring us on to one of the other things we wanted to cover because obviously the biggest objection people always put in the way there is, well, I haven't got time to do TikTok. I haven't got time to, in to do Instagram. Um, but they have got time to do lots of things that they shouldn't be doing or lots of things that don't make sense or take too long. Um, because, But one of the projects that you've been working on recently, um, and there's a really fantastic video on the Styles TV YouTube channel, is, uh, is yourself and Marshall Atkinson as part of the Heat Press Transformation Series. When you go into a business um, and you try and you monitor them, and you uh, look at what they're doing and try and find ways to save time and find time because there probably is day hours in the week that you could get back by thinking about your process a bit more so so hoping you could tell us a little bit more about the uh, transformation series that you've been working on oh yeah well that's been uh we did our first one we have another shoot coming up very very soon um and marshall is just an incredible resource uh not only for the decorated apparel industry because i mean he knows knows it inside and out from heat printing to embroidery to screen printing to sublimation uh he's had a, a lot of experience and like i mentioned the experience is something that, you know, is, is you have to, you have to either learn it or trust somebody and take their experience uh, as your own. So that's something that Marshall, I think does a really, really great job of in any shop, just getting that outside pair of uh, eyes, you know, like his one example uh, that he says, like, cause when we were talking, like, uh, how do you do it? You know, how do you, how do you keep these ideas fresh and be able to identify stuff? And he's like, it's actually really easy. Once you start like going to all of these shops, you see different ways that people do it. Uh, and a lot of cases, it's like, uh, you know, the workers at the fish market, they don't even smell the fish anymore. Like they can't smell, they can't smell it anymore because they've been in it every single day. And so it just takes somebody from the outside walking in to be like, man, you guys didn't realize it smells like fish in here, right? Because you're, you're handling it every day, <laughs> You didn't day, right? say that when you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So it's kind of that that just one outside perspective to be like, a question. Why are you guys doing? Well, it's the way that we've always done it. Well, there is another way that you could do it. And it, it's hard for any shop to change, especially like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving pieces and there's people's jobs. It's, you know, you have to define this, this line between what's right for business and what's right for your customers and what's right for your employees, you know? So running a business is obviously very, you know, complicated, but when you're, when you're focused on the day to day, sometimes you lose that 10,000 foot view. So it's so great to have like Marshall come in, be able to identify these things. And I got to say like campus clothes as a shop, absolutely incredible customer base and the people working there were so open to new ideas. They were so welcoming uh, to come in and just kind of, Hey, we hung, we hung out for two days shooting the video. Uh, but you could see that, you know, they've, they've built a wonderfully successful company on uh, on their employees and the relationships that they've built with their customers. So like seeing that and how they do it and how they leverage a heat printing department. Because essentially, if we would have visited that shop five, six years ago, it would have been a vastly different experience, probably with one or two heat presses being used for names and numbers on the backs of jerseys. That would be it. Where today, they use that entire heat press department, uh, eight or nine fusion presses that they had um, to help fulfill online store orders where usually it would have to meet a minimum of 12, 24 pieces, depending on what it was. Otherwise, it just wasn't produced. Boom. Kicked out. Sorry. Didn't meet the minimum quantity. Now they're able to produce those at higher profit margins than what they would have had to do setting up a screen printing press. So they do everything with the way they're planning their shop or planning an order going through their shop, they're thinking about, hey, could we heat press this? And a lot of that is with the capabilities of direct-to-film printing. Now, they were using in that video, if you watch the heat press transformation on Stahl's TV YouTube channel, you will see uh, them actually printing a lot of the screen printed transfers as well, just because they use it to supplement the screen printing. Yes, double-lined, I've been here. 
Now, this was probably five, six years ago working at an old print shop, but double lined mesh shorts. I don't know why. We printed a lot for like heavy metal bands and they loved mesh shorts, right? But they wanted like two, three, four colors on them instead of just a one color print. Well, that's impossible. On, on an automatic carousel printing press, those, those, the double lining shift. So when you're registering two, three colors, even one color sometimes could get, as they move around, they start to shift. So then your print's crooked now. It's not easy to keep them aligned and straight and centered. Boom, kick it over to the heat press department. So doing a lot of athletic wear and a lot of uh, colleges, universities, the uh, athletic departments that they were, they were dealing with, a lot of it's warm-up gear, not just game-worn jerseys, but the warm-up gear, the locker room gear, the spirit wear, the, the fan gear going to the, to the uh, fans where they they need this specialty application that is hard to do on the equipment that they have. So how easy is it to just add in? Oh yeah, we could print a order of 300 shirts or 300 shorts that I think you see in that video. Um, the yellow, like it's a, I think it's a yellow bird logo going on black shorts. Uh, but I think they did like 300 of those between two operators in like an hour or something. Like it's just absolutely incredible the profitability that they bring to the shop, freeing up the bigger equipment for the large profitable runs for what those machines are built for. So you're not setting it up. You're not setting up a, a you know, a 12 station carousel press that you see in the background almost the entire time that there's people working over there and there's jobs going to it. Uh, but the shelf for the heat press department is just stacked up super high. And then Marshall comes in and brings in a lot of the insights that he's seen uh, with other companies that are using say direct to film transfers for online store fulfillment. Hey, we have this system where we think keep things clean, neat and tidy, and a lot of it is listening then too cuz uh, uh, almost everybody that we talked to identified the need for a larger shop. They just don't have the space. They're they're growing and they need to keep adding equipment and like when it gets to be busy season like it is probably right now, that boxes are stacked up high. So what's a better way to organize this and get things? Maybe you don't need more space, you don't need to go buy a new building. If you could just get work in the shop and out of the shop quicker, it, is that is that freeing up more space then? Instead of having boxes piled high, they're really only in the shop for a day or two and they're out. And then maximizing the spaces that you could put this space. So, I mean, it's something like uh, just the one example in that, in that episode, uh, it's like the pickup shelf. It doesn't take up too much space, maybe 200 square feet or something. Uh, but when you're saying we're running out of room, is two, how much would you pay for 200 square feet to have somebody come and build an addition on your building or buy more land or buy a new building, you know, like where if you just paid somebody instead of having people come and pick those up, it was the pickup shelf that just wasn't picked up. Go drop those off. You just get them out of the shop. They're paid for, you know, the work's paid for the work sitting there, uh, just taking up extra room. So being able to get that out. And that's one of those cases that like, well, we just have that there. And that's that outside perspective of like, I know that's the way that you guys have done things, but if you just get rid of that, you get all that space back. You guys said you need more space, right? And it's like, yeah, we do. And it's something as simple as that where they have like even, uh, I think there's a shot of the van that we have in that just packed, packed to the, the roof of this van. It's just stuffed full of boxes. Like add one more trip a day and that, that would clear out that entire area. You'd be able to get in that van, deliver to your customers, keep that personalized touch. Yeah, you're paying a little bit for gas and the wages, but what is that space then worth to you, you know? And so it's just, I mean, th those are outside perspectives that I could never have, you know? <laughs> like I have 13 years of experience in the industry and a lot of it is printing and, and working with efficiencies or artwork efficiencies specifically because I come from the design background. But coming from that operations mindset and being in the industry and doing this for 35 years, Marshall is just an absolutely incredible resource. Um, and I love working with him. Can't wait to get back out. Uh, the next shop I think we're going to go visit is going to be out West. So out in Utah and Salt Lake city. So, uh, hopefully everything, I think we're lining everything up for it soon and we'll be getting back out there. So, so yeah, keep, keep eyes open for another one of those, uh, those episodes coming. Yeah, so everyone should, after this, everyone should go and watch that video on Tiles TV if they haven't already, because it's a really interesting watch. And I think it's it's always good to question process, question efficiency. And mm -hmm. I think the most important thing you can do as a business sometimes is even if, if you're not the one that's actually printing or fusing, is just to get that ticket when it first comes in and just walk it through the your shop and see 
what direction it goes do you go in a straight line do you go in a logical fashion um and then you can start to question everything you do and that's when you'll start to find time and you like say find space is a massive one as well because you'll start to be like oh that doesn't make sense let's just mm -hmm. move this and move that um because and it but it all kind of comes back to it's a form of relevancy really isn't it because it's a case of am i relevant to my process now because processes change all the time you know you know three three and a half years ago there was no ultra color there was no option mm -hmm. to have that in your um shop so but lots so many businesses now were like well actually i just use ultra color for everything because it's it's a better product it's so much easier but now you might find this an old piece of equipment like sit, sitting in the corner or sitting in the way that you could just move into a different area or um sell if you're not using it at all and then immediately you've got space you've got efficiency and you can get more work and you can do it quicker that way mm -hmm. and one thing yeah one thing that marshall really kind of said and it was right before we started filming and it just set up the entire visit for me uh was uh i said yeah well we'll talk about the efficiency and he said i'm not ta i'm not coming here to talk about efficiency and i was like whoa <laughs> that's the whole Why reason we're to yeah like <laughs> We're supposed to show up. He said, I'm coming here to talk about effectiveness because you could be efficient. You could be quick at doing something, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. You could be quick at throwing darts at the dartboard. Right. You're efficient. Look at that. Now I could get back to my pint. Right. Like <laughs> I don't I, they're out of my hands. But did you hit the bullseye? Right. So that is being effective is being efficient at the right targeted uh, area. And I'm sure Marshall in the video talks about it a little bit, <laughs> a little bit better than I than I summed it up here. but. That really, that really, you know, I took that with me because like, it is so true that a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Well, are you busy doing the right things? Are you busy doing the most effective? Is it the most effective use of your time? You know, where like, it isn't just, it, it's the, you know, it's that whole, the whole picture. It's not just the one, one way. Cause it, yeah, if you're measuring efficiency, like, yeah. Joe did great. Joe's super efficient. He did, you know, 200 impressions in an hour. Joe's great. All right. Well, how many of those need to be reprinted because they're skewed or off center, you know, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, you could be efficient. You could be quick, but you got to be effective. So the way that he frames that and doesn't even talk about efficiency, he's talking about effectiveness uh, is just that one. That's that's that light bulb moment, you know, that like pops up and you're like, you know what? That's it. Like, and I've applied some of that to my own life. <laughs> I've like, wow, I have more time and well, maybe not more time in the day. The day still flies by, but <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm making a larger difference and being more effective, uh, just being, you know, aware of it. That kind of links back to what you were saying earlier about the social media side of things as well. Like you could spend an hour, two hours, three hours post production in your day, like, you know, once you shut your shop down or whatever and take loads of professional pictures and do all of that but that one shot of like you said the t-shirt on the press that might take you five seconds to snap might be just as good and that's mm -hmm. so much more effective than spending hours setting up a shot that might not do as well we've done it before i've spent hours making videos put them out online and gone this is going to be great and then the one that i shot in drafts on stories is the one that goes viral and i'm just like Boom. Yeah, but, you, but it's, it's true isn't it and that's a similar sort of process i know it's not printing and you know accuracy but a similar sort of thing yeah and when you mentioned social media uh we had i mean tiktok is such it's such a wild land <laughs> just because yeah you put you you put all this this effort into like oh yeah i'm gonna show them exactly how to do this and and this is gonna be great i i have this question all the time and you frame it up and you do everything right and then like you just post a silly meme or like it's pedro pascal eating a sandwich like this is the middle of the week like and boom just okay cool well uh you know an actor eating a sandwich or uh you sure about that are you sure about that you sure about that like those silly little memes that you could you could pop in there like just outperform everything like and that takes two seconds to do like that's why if you show your passion on social media you show your drive as a creative or an entrepreneur whatever it is it's better than 99 percent of the garbage <laughs> that's out there if it's dance videos but I mean, it's all what, what, you know, your viewers are going to relate to and a lot. And I mean, in some cases it's those silly memes, but if that's a way to get your product or your name or your brand out there, like it's, it takes, it doesn't take four hours to do. It takes just a couple minutes. And, uh, and if that's an effective use of your time to try to reach a new audience, then, uh, I'm, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs>
and I'll probably see your TikTok as I'm scrolling at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> so if you get a like from the Transfer Express page, it's probably me. <laughs> One thing um, I remember you saying to me when TikTok kind of first became a thing in one of our Zoom meetings that we had before, um, you said TikTok is like the wild west of social media. And that's every, any time I do anything on socials, that's what sticks into my head now. And it's a love hate thing because I can't shift that mindset now of like strategy on TikTok. I'm like, I don't think there is one. But deep down, my social media, like, gut wants to be like no there must be something that you can do behind this but i i just hear dave in my head going nope you just have to throw it out there <laughs> it's the wild but and yeah there's i would say it's not as not as volatile as it used to be and that like that TikTok of 2020 2021 like and i i was i was just kind of getting started on the platform saw my friends get some success and have a few viral posts but like by viral i mean you know like it's a hundred thousand views and like for i mean just my buddy who has 800 followers like 100,000 views it's like whoa dude look that's a lot of views but it was just the way that it was being picked up and like the with the sounds and like he was just doing silly things and just linking them to sounds that would blow them up and it's like yeah it, it that's cool but it wasn't until I started seeing like people who were running t-shirt shops or like selling keychains or like just decorated like mugs and tumblers uh that would essentially like blow up and change their lives overnight that I was like, whoa, now we're really talking. We're really talking about the power of something real here. That's going to translate to something else than just views or clicks or likes or engagement. This is changing people's lives where they were a full-time student and now they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars just being able to live their own dream as an entrepreneur, all because one post that they made on TikTok happened to just be shown to 2 million people. And it's like, you just bought the, you know, the Super Bowl ad, you bought a, a commercial on TV for 10 minutes in your bedroom on a Sunday afternoon or something like where you're just instead of scrolling, like, let me just show what I'm doing. And seeing that that volatility and just that absolute like, just power of one post to change people's lives. That's why I'm like, yeah, it's the wild west. And then you see that post do really well. Their channel blows up. A whole bunch of new followers. They have to shut their Etsy store down because they're like, I can't take any new orders. I'm literally going to be producing these 2,000 orders now. I was used to doing two orders a week, and now I'm doing 2,000 in a day. Like, that kind of stuff changes your life. And even like one of the, uh, I, I, I think her name's Emily Page, one of the ones who kind of saw that viral success now, like, she stopped producing her own cup. She stocks her entire garage with like, pallets and pallets of the, the this pre-printed glassware where essentially like it's her full-time job it's her fiance or husband's like full-time job now too that they just sell decorated glassware online and all it came from was hey this is just my little silly side hustle that i'm going to show off are you a nice coffee lover and of course she printed some apparel too um but like that's like it just blew up and like seeing that it, yeah it is it is the wild west. But then, yeah, you put four hours into a perfectly crafted post and a silly meme or some sound trumps you <laughs> and hits that for you page. But I think that's, you know, that's the beauty of the platform, too, is that you can uh, and I'm, sh I'm sure it's probably it's like how Instagram was in the early days where it's like I only want to see things from people that I follow or I could go to the explore section to find new things. And TikTok says, well, we're going to put that in front of you um, as a for you page. And then essentially, here's your followers if you want to see what those guys are doing. But almost everybody that I know spends the entire time in the app on the for you page because the, the way the algorithm serves your stuff, like it is it is the most relevant. It's like when Instagram was, was really relevant before, you know, two thirds of it now are just ads. And when TikTok gets to that point, I'm sure it's going to be the same thing. And then people are going to move to go to whatever platform it is. But you could see the the short form video just really taking a toll on all social media. If you're on the Etsy app on your on your phone, your mobile device, like it looks like TikTok. <laughs> like there's short form video in that Pinterest. It used to be photos on a board. Now it's scrollable short form video. <laughs> like all the reels on Instagram, reels on Facebook, reels, reels, reels. 
everybody is adapting this format because it is easy to consume. As a content creator myself, though, I worry that like any of this short form video is just zapping our attention spans and what's happening to our, you know, happening to our children. But we're capitalizing on what they say, like the average human attention span is like two seconds or something. And like, so if you if you need to do something, grab them quick and tell it to them in a efficient, maybe let's say effective manner. Right. And so that's that's condensing it to the way that we've been fed information for a while. So I think that's why it's just so incredibly popular. But I'm I'm a I'm a big believer in the fan of uh, of like YouTube or YouTube University, the longer extended content, as long as it's relevant. I don't want to hear a whole bunch of filler. And yeah, I'll I'll be completely honest when I watch YouTube videos. It's almost always at like 1.5 speed, even if it's just something like for entertainment. Uh, I want to maximize my time. I want to be the most effective with my viewing. Right. So <laughs> being able to uh, to speed it up on YouTube is great. But then you get more information. You get those stories that experience, you know, if I'm looking how to do something and, uh, you know, I learned I learned much more. Uh, from YouTube, I feel like in the first couple of years out of college, when you really hit that real world, uh, then then you do in college. And so it's like having that resource available to you is, I mean, part of the reason why I just absolutely love giving back on the platform too, because helping other creators just the way that creators helped me um, uh, throughout all my entire life. And I mean, well, I wish YouTube was around when I was a kid. That would have been sweet. I would have learned a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a benefit that the younger generation does have, let's say. <laughs> yeah, I have to say YouTube is one of my favorite platforms now of all time. Like whether I'm here at work or I'm at home or, you know, anything in between, it's it's my go-to for anything. I, I either search TikTok, Instagram or YouTube for whatever I want to know. And it used mm -hmm. to be that you'd go on Google and you'd search and, you know, you still do that from time to time, but... I, d I don't know. I think I'd rather if I, I don't know, say I'm searching for a new, I don't know, design or trend or something. I will search on socials for it before I go to the Internet, because I think in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, that's more relevant. That's more up to date. People are posting more on there than they are on blogs, on Google and that kind of thing. So that's automatically where you go to now. Plus, it's more visual. Like you said, it is, it's moving as video. It's, it's quick, so it doesn't take up your entire day. But you get more rather than having to scroll through blogs and, you know, all the pop up stuff that comes up. And I just I get two scrolls down and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm bored now. And yep. I click Boom. off of something else. And mm -hmm. it's yeah, you're so right. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's 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 a different way that we kind of consume media. And uh, it's kind of mad, isn't it? When you think a, about it, a little, <laughs> when you really yeah. think about I, it. It's I, I was trying. I, I started to go there and then I was like, you know what? Let, let's keep it. Let's keep it light. But that's why, like. The YouTube is the new television. Like my daughter's five years old and like she prefers to watch these bite sized snippets. And I would say bite sized, like a lot of the episodes she watches, it's it's all kids programming on YouTube kids, but like still like it's it's 20 minute content that like that is the preferred method of viewing, like as opposed to just watching regular TV. I don't know anybody who like still has like TV, you know, like ev everything is online, everything's streaming, everything is on demand. And so just being able to, as a, as a, a brand or a business, just being able to, you, you know, you don't, you're not making a commercial. You're, you're just making something that people are going to want to see. And I mean, for apparel decorators, we have this, this cool, unique power, right? That like, it's, you know, whatever, 1% of the population actually knows how things are made. And so being able to show people how things are made, like the t-shirt you're wearing, you want to see how it was made, how it was printed? Like we have this cool ability to be able to give people this inside look behind the scenes. Same with the heat press transformation, seeing that inside look behind the scenes of a larger shop, you know, like this is the stuff that if my business is growing, I have to think about. And that's why it's, it's, it's important. And that's the way that like, I wanted to frame that too, that like, it's not just about this one business. It is about that, that light bulb moment that you could have just watching a 25 minute video, you know? Like where it's, it's somebody else's shop, but hmm, we kind of have that problem too. Hmm, we're kind of running out of space too. How do they solve it? What's recommended for them to solve it? And so like being able to have those takeaways away, that's, that's one thing as kind of the, I don't want, I don't know if I'm actually like, like a producer or a director or what my, you know, what you want to officially call it as my role in that and in, in putting that episode together um, or the entire series. But like, that was what I really wanted to capture. Um, as kind of setting the video up, setting Marshall up, letting him do his thing. Um, but then yeah, really inspiring others. And so that's, yeah, I think that's a great, 
that's a great wrap up in a very positive way. Instead of going down the deep, dark hole of YouTube. That's and, a whole other and, episode. Yeah, <laughs> that it is, it's positive. Let's stay positive. Let's, let's share uh, experiences with each other uh, and lift everybody up. But that's one thing that I will always say about the apparel decorating community that we are officially with the global economy that we have now, especially like if you just look at a national scale, like a national economy here in the United States, it's so easy with online sales. We're all actually in competition with each other, right? Yeah. Shipping charges get expensive when you start shipping tons of shirts across, you know, large distances, but at the most part, we are willing to help each other out and lift others up. Like whether it be, on the screen printing side or the direct to film side or heat uh, like heat transfer vinyl or sublimation there are so many resources out there and so many creators and brands and businesses willing to share their processes to lift the entire industry up as a whole and paint us in a better light to the general public or in essence our customers which is just absolutely so cool because like i used to play music right i was in a band and like that is truly a community like Yes, you're you're all in competition if you're looking at, you know, fans or whatever, but it's not like it it, it doesn't stop there. It's oh, if you're a fan of that band, you're probably also going to like this band too. And it should have been much more collaborative than being a competition where that was a it sh it was a collaboration, right? Everybody's better together. We all win if, you know, the room looks more packed when other musicians from other bands come to see that band play instead of just people who are music fans and not necessarily playing in other bands where like we could effectively steal each other's business. Or like, if you're a large company, you could possibly put another apparel decorator out of business, but we don't, we, we, there's more than enough. I've seen it, especially in the expanse of the industry since I've been in it, uh, that like there is more than enough to go around and people are more than willing to share their experiences, even being in competition with each other. And that is, I don't know. There's something magical about that. Something magical about the apparel decorating community and just the people, the people here who, uh, you know, they're they're not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to seek help. And I think that's in part because there are a lot of people who are willing to help it. Like I mentioned, experience is is something that you're going to have to live through. You're going to make mistakes. So I've made a lot of mistakes and I've learned from them uh, over the course of the 13 years I've been in the apparel decorating industry. So like, it, it is it is a lot to get through and a lot of wasted money that if I could save one person from making some of those similar mistakes that I did to help them make more money or be more profitable, be more efficient in their business, I'm absolutely going to do it. And that's going to make me feel, I mean, that that fulfills me. That's what I want to do. I want to help people out. I want to help their businesses get better, um, you know, regardless of what that looks like. And that's why a lot of the content, even that like I, I focus on, isn't necessarily directed right at heat transfers. It's I want I genuinely want to help your business succeed however you're putting ink to a substrate. And if I could share some of my experiences that help that, then so be it. But platforms like TikTok or YouTube or social media <laughs> in that aspect uh allow me allow an avenue a a vehicle to be able to do that. That's really cool. What a perfect way to wrap up the episode. You have summarized that so well and in such a positive way. Thank you, Dave. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to bring my enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, well, do you have anything to add before no, we wrap I up think this that's week? It. Just to make, just to say again, go and check out that video that Dave and yes, Marsh Lackinson did on the Styles TV channel. Um, I'd encourage you all to go and check out the Transfer Express uh, social channels uh, so you can see more of the great stuff that Dave and the team there are putting out. So Dave's some, TikToking. There's always some really uh, fantastic videos out there for you to learn from. Brilliant. And yeah, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you so much to everyone who's listening. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something that you can take away and apply to your decoration business. If you have, leave us a comment. Um, and yeah, we'll be back next week with another episode.